Hebrews chapter 4. I won't preach on lettuce. You see it? Lettuce. I believe this is something we all see. Who knows, maybe once a week, maybe at least once a month. I preach a stick in your mind. Lettuce. I won't preach tonight on lettuce. I ain't went crazy, I promise you, amen. I'm not, it, it's in there. Bless you, Lord. Hebrews chapter 4, I'm going to read the whole chapter just as quick as I can. I'm sure you'll catch on to the point. Let us therefore, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. We're going to explain this. But the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached enter not in because of unbelief. Again he limiteth a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? And that word's interpreted Joshua, uh, speaking of in the Old Testament. Nine, jo Jesus and Joshua's the same name. One's Hebrews, one Greek. And nine says, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he hath also ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. You ain't hiding. God sees, he knows. But all things that are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest, this is very important, that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. That's saying he can. But was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Father, in Jesus' name, I just pray for a while. It allows, Lord God, to get plugged into heaven, Lord God, the lips, the ears, that we might get some done for the cause of Christ. Bless the dear precious saints that are gathered here. Thank you, Lord God, you said there's a rest for your people. Help us to rest, Lord God, in your love and in your promises. God, may you have your will and way in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. So by this point, we've caught on to what it is, lettuce. We see three lettuce here in Hebrews chapter 4, we see, let us therefore fear, uh, let us labor, and let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. This chapter here in Hebrews chapter 4, you have got to understand the tabernacle, the Old Testament as well, to really be able to dig into the book of Hebrews. Uh, it, is a, uh, it is a fulfillment of that tabernacle, so to say, and what Christ has done for you and I. And if we jump back uh, a chapter, we would find where the writer, I don't know, people say it's Apostle Paul, uh, but the writer is telling us of uh, how Christ is, more worthy, uh, Christ is more worthy than Moses was. And he's telling these 
He's wrote, it's called Hebrews because he was writing to Hebrews. And he's telling them that, uh, that this rest in Christ is by faith and by faith alone. It is not by our good works. It's not by, we can't buy our way into it. We don't deserve our way into it. We accept the rest of God through faith and nothing else. Amen. So the thought this night I'd like to preach, resting in God's lettuce garden. Resting in God's lettuce garden. I've never seen a garden. I tried looking up and finding a good, I tried finding a garden that was nothing but lettuce. If you had a garden that was none but lettuce, you could have salad and rabbit dumplings all day, every day. Amen. You could sit out there and kill them rabbits all day long and have your lettuce at the same time. Amen. But I want to focus on resting in God's lettuce garden. There is a rest for God's people. There is a rest for those that have called and trust the name that is above all names. And friend, God wants you to rest. He wants you to be confident. He wants you to be bold. He wants you to be sure of the promises that he has made you and I. It ain't by the good things that you can do. It ain't about the good things that you've done or you plan to do. My friend, there is a rest for you and I. I wrote down some words. I've, I've got a garden at home, and I started writing down some words that crossed my mind uh, when I think of garden. When I think of garden, I think of life. And I mean, bless God, there's some life in them plants. Amen. Amen. Growth. You can go outside, have a zucchini this size one day, and come out the next day, and it's the size of a baseball bat. Amen. There, when I think about a garden, I think of growth. Amen. Life, growth, fruit, hard work, rest, reward. Amen. There's reward. Beauty, enjoyment, miracle. It's a miracle to have a zucchini as big and it's out here the next day. It's a miracle. Amen. Uh, science can tell you how to pop a seed up and how to put it in a wet napkin and get it to grow and do all these things. But can I, can I tell you, friend, uh, you can't go past that. It's just the miracle of God. And, and we're just words that describes a garden, seasons, thoughts. I've had lots of time in that garden. I've had lots of thoughts, lots of conversations with God, maybe even myself from time to time. Who knows? It's a, it's a place of beauty. But can I tell you, friend, it's a place of price. It costs something. I'm glad God put me around a bunch of good people that took care of me and, and allowed to give me some plants and things. My garden didn't cost me a dollar, praise God. I thank God for that. But can I tell you, friend, uh, there is a garden of rest for God's uh, people. Amen. Uh, rest is something that we have got to have this day and time so we're not in and out debating whether we're born again, debating whether or not we've got it. Bless God, when you get it, you'll know you got it. And if you don't know you got it, just figure out that you can get it and get it and stay there, amen. Anchor it down and go on and rest in God's lettuce amen. garden. Yes. Reminds you, a garden, it starts, it's, it, there's life in it, there's growth, but there is effort that you have got to put into it. I believe we got some good Christians that's gotten saved, born again. They're doing things for God. Uh, the, their fruit is evident, but I believe we've got some Christians that is like a bump on a log, like a bump on a pickle. I ain't doing nothing at all. Uh, they're all constantly nervous. They're constantly mad. They're constantly aggravated, and they're spreading that nonsense. Why? Because they're not resting in the promises of God. Uh, they've just said, I've gotten saved. I'm going to rest a while. Honey, it don't work that way. You and I have got to put some effort into this thing. Amen. I want to talk about what it takes to rest in God's lettuce garden. What it takes to rest in God's lettuce garden. Point number one, we see it in verse one. Look with me. Let us therefore fear. Least a promise being left us entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. So to say, you keep debating salvation. Amen. He says, let us fear. Point number one, let us fear. Amen. And I tell you, friend, we're living in a day and time where men, women, boys, and girls does not fear a holy God. Can I tell you, friend, uh, uh, you must fear God. You must understand that everything's in his hands, uh, that there is a place called heaven, that there is a place called hell, and that you're going to one of them places, amen, when you die. But can I tell you, friend, this fear here is not a tormenting fear. 
This fear right here that the writer has pinned down is not a fear that you and I are to be tormented about. This is not a fear uh, that the writer was saying, you're going to hell, you're going to hell, you're going to hell. Without Jesus, you are. But this here, this fear here is more of a reverence. It is a reverence for God. After much research, here's what I come up with. Fear, that's kind of scary me. Fear, an approach of reverence that only God deserves and that mankind must give an account for. Amen. It, it is a reverence that we give unto God. Hey, I'm not, I'll tell you right now behind this pulpit, God is my witness, I'm not scared to God to send me to hell. I'm not scared of it. God can't send me to hell. God cannot, God will not send me to hell. You know why? God can't lie. And he, his Bible, his book says, if you have trusted him as Lord and Savior of your life, you have repented of sin, listen to me, if you have turned away from the world, if you have turned away from self-righteousness, and you have turned towards the righteousness of God, can I tell you, friend, you have nothing to fear. God cannot lie, friend. You are not going to hell. Amen. That's what it takes. My friend, this is a reverent fear, but can I tell you, I fear that a lot of people don't believe that. Oh, I fear that a million people have denied the gospel of Jesus Christ. They've come short of it. They don't believe. They don't, they, they don't want to believe. They'd rather stay in their sin and love the world and, and not show reverence to God. As I'm pondering this message, I, just yesterday my son walked up to me. and uh, or Actually, we were sitting on the couch and my uh, Chloe, she, brought, she said, Mom, they colored on my cover. And they brought that thing upstairs and it had a big blue stain on it, marker stain. I said, Josiah, come here. And Josiah, come up to me. I said, son, did you do that? <laughs> Josiah, did you do that? Who did? Clara. Clara, come here. Clara, did you do that? <laughs> Who did it? I think Chloe. It's her own cover. But as I'm saying, that, it was Josiah that did it. I knew it was from the beginning. But Josiah did not want to tell me. Josiah's not scared of spankings. He's got plenty. I spank my children. Amen. Bible says so. I don't hurt him. I do it because I love him. Amen. Praise God. Bible says, spare not uh, the rod. It shall not kill him. Amen. Praise God. It's love to discipline your children. Praise God. And my son, he's not scared of daddy's spankings. Daddy's spankings don't hurt. But it did hurt him to know he did something wrong that upset his daddy. Amen. He did something that he knew daddy has told him, you're not supposed to do things like that. And he knew something where he did not want to upset daddy. And he just could not find it in himself. And he, he dropped little tears down his eyes. And I said, son, just, just go have a seat. And that was enough for me. He knew that he had done wrong. I knew that he'd done wrong. And he still could not admit that he did it. Why? Because he has reverence for his dad. Can I tell you, friends, we've got to have the same type of reverence for our creator, for our master, God in heaven. Now I want you to look next. He says, let us therefore fear. Remember, this is not a fear, a tormenting fear. This is a reverence fear. Amen. And now when you research fear in your Bible, you might see things a little bit different. Amen. And then look at this next word. Next word he says, least. Least. This word least means to prevent or prevention. From what? Look at the next part of the verse. I promise from rest. If we don't fear God... We're not going to rest in his garden, amen, of lettuce, amen, of his garden of rest. God wants you and I to have rest, and we must fear God, lest we forget the promise of God, that we have liberty, that God loves you and I, that he has saved our soul, amen, that we are on our way to heaven because of what Jesus Christ has done for you and I and for the world, amen. Praise God. If we have repented of sin and trusted Christ. We, what is this verse saying? We must take God uh, for who he, for what he is, for who he is, for what he says, and what he does. And I want to break, I want to touch each and every one of them uh, for just a moment really quick. What he is. What is God? What is he? He's the great I am. He always has been and always will be. Amen. There is no other. God is a spirit. The Bible says it so. In John 4, 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Can I tell you, friend, God's not like you and I. He's not bound to a physical body. He's just not a man. Though he was. Oh, glory to God. But though he was, 
He sure was. Hebrews 10, 4 says, For it was not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he says, Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Amen. Amen. And that's why we get, look at verse number 2 in our text. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. It's been the same since the beginning of time. The, the gospel story, they was looking at it towards the cross, and we're looking back at the cross, amen, waiting for the Savior. But watch what it says, the second part. But the word preached, Moses was a preacher, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. You and I have got to believe God's a spirit. Prove that to me, brother Josh. I can't. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. That's what he is. God is a spirit. He's not like you and I. Amen. Though he loved us. Who he is. God is our creator. He's the master. He's the, he's the creator of all things. The Bible says that nothing was not created that was not created by him. God is the reason for it all. I don't care that man, God, God didn't save him the first week. He made an automobile, but everything that, that, that is inside of that automobile, God first created. Amen. Everything you see in this, in this world, uh, God is the creator of amen. In our text, we see here, uh, look what it says. If we jumped all the way down, we see uh, where he says that in the foundation of time, it was speaking of in verse, on the seventh day, in verse 4, it says, for he spake in a certain place on the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest from the seventh day from all his works. He, now they're taking us all the way back. The writer's taking us all the way back to Genesis uh, when God created the world. And on the seventh day, he rested. Amen. And I'm getting somewhere. Just, just hold on just a minute. Amen. Uh, in verse 3, it says, his works were finished from the foundation of the world. See it in verse 3? Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. The Bible says that Christ, he was slain before the foundation of the world. God don't do something without a plan. God don't do something without first knowing it. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Colossians 1, 21 through 22 says this. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in his, the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and reprovable in his sight. So who is he? He's God our creator, but yet he's God our savior. Hey, he's the same God that created you and I, knew that we would mess up, came and entered into a body like unto our sinful flesh and died on a cross for you and I. That we can stand, Brother Mark. Uh, Brother Bobby, we can stand before God, Brother Sonny. We can stand before God without spot, without blemish, unrebukable, unreputable, uh, because of Christ's precious blood shed at Calvary. Who is he? He's God the Savior. He's God the Creator. He's God the Savior. you got to have faith, my friend. It's so simple a child can understand it. Amen. Look at verse Hebrews in our text in Hebrews 4.10. Look what it says. For he that has entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works. Amen. He has ceased from his own works. At this point, we walk away from our works of righteousness and we just simply accept God's. It's by his work. It's about what he did. It's not about what you and I did, what you and I are doing. We simply, in that moment of salvation, we just accept Christ and what he did for you and I. Not our works of righteousness, but his. Amen. Doesn't mean you stop there, amen, and just rest and sit down. And we're, we're going to get into all that, amen. But it ain't also, it ain't just what he is and who he is. Remember, point number one, let us therefore fear we see it's who he is, why we have this reverence for God, this fear, because of what he is, because of who he is, and because of what he says. You can take God at his word. I can tell you something and I will fail you. Bless God. God has never failed me. And anything that is inside of this book, God has not failed, nor will he ever. The Bible says every jot and every tittle 
shall come to pass. Amen. Praise God. And we can take God at his word. I look with me in verse number 12. Now he says, uh, for the word of God is quick. That means the Bible says that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. This book I hold in my hands is 1611 King James Bible to the English speaking people. Can I tell you, friend, it's inspired of God and it's his word. For the word of God is quick. This is alive. This is the only book that you will read that the author is present every time you read it. Amen. That's why you see something or hear something a little different each time. Amen. It's powerful. It's God Almighty. It is God. The God is Almighty. He, he's everything. He's outside of anything and everything that you and I could even think of or come up with or, or examine or, or whatever it may be. It says, and it's sharper. This word of God right here is sharper than any two-edged sword. You know what that tells me? He's even outside of his creation. He's outside of it. He's more a, a two-edged sword to cut anything. But God's even outside of that. Amen. Praise God. Makes a whole lot of sense, uh, doesn't it? Amen. We see also, next it says, he's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. God splits things that you and I don't even see. I don't see your soul, and if I did, I'd be the first one out of here. I don't see your spirit, and if I did, again, I'd be the first one out of here. Amen. And God sees these things, and God splits these things apart. He puts them together. He puts these things apart. That's why you read this whole book. It starts bothering you. It starts convicting you. Amen. You start learning to have a reverence for God. I don't got much of a reverence for God, but I do my mom, and I do my grandma, and I do my grandpa. Bless God, start reading the Bible, and you'll start having a reverence for him as well, because he'll start cutting things that need to be cut. He'll start separating things that needs to be separated. Amen. That's what it's for. And look, and of the joints in the morrow, he also separates the physical things. What cannot God not do? And tell me one illness God can't heal. And tell me one thing that God cannot do. He can do it both physical and spiritual. Amen. And of the joints tomorrow, and is a discerner. Amen. Of the thoughts and the intents of the mind. Amen. This discerner means uh, one who sees. So God even sees the things that we think. He can see the unseen. He can hear the unheard. The things that go on inside of your mind, God hears those things. The things that you can see and imagine inside of your head, God sees those things. Isn't that amazing? The Word of God, we're talking about reverence. You and I have in reverence to and for a holy God that knows everything. Now watch it. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen. Of the heart. I just had a I just had a, a heart scan done. They said my heart's doing pretty good. But can I tell you, I had a heart scan done a long time ago when I come to Christ. Amen. That's what counts. God sees things and hears things that you and I don't. So we can take God at his word. Amen. God says in Ezekiel 18 20, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The soul that tell me one person here. You said you ain't never sinned before. If you raised your hand, you just lied. He says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The soul. He didn't say the body, bless God. Did you hear it? He said, the soul. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. All the bodies are going to die. Not all the souls are dying. Not all souls are going to hell, praise God. Some's going to heaven. Few compared to it, but watch it. You can, you, we had to have this fear for God, this reverence because of what he says. And he says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Oh, but he turned around and says in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ain't you glad that this same God that is just is also the justifier of them that sin and come short and deserve an eternal separation from God and hell fire for all eternity, but instead he decides to say, whosoever will, let him come. Red, yellow, black, white, tall, short, fat, skinny, no matter where you're from, what you've done, my friend, Jesus Christ will save your soul. Amen. God our Savior, I'm excited about that, amen. And because of that, look with me in our text. In chapter 4, 9. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Jesus Christ's life was no rest. You know why? So you and I could rest. Amen. Jesus' life was not a rest. They sought to stone him. They constantly lied on him and mocked him and, and did all these things that they did to him. But can I tell you, friend, he did it so you and I can rest. Have life more abundantly. Here, amen. On this side of eternity. Friend, I'm, 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 I'm 
I'm looking, I'm looking forward uh, to eternity on this side. I, I'm not worried about it. I've read the book. It's going to be glorious. It's going to be bliss. It's going to be wonderful. But friend, God says I come to give you life that you might have it more abundantly. Amen. God wants you to rest here on this earth. He wants you to be happy. Amen. And enjoy what he's done for you. Amen. Praise God. And lastly, what he does, everything he says. What does God do? Everything he says. Read the book. You'll find out. Everything that God said in the Old Testament come to pass. Outside of what the things that are prophesied uh, in, in Daniel and things that is to come in the tribulation period, the thousand-year millennial reign, and them things, but those are coming to pass. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, we see it all coming to pass. God has not failed once, and he's not going to fail once. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We, we have this reverence and this fear. Let us fear this reverence for God because what he says and what he does. He does. Everything that he does, he says, amen. Praise God. Uh, he said he was slain before the foundation of the world. He came and died for our sins. Emmanuel, uh, amen. Praise God. Emmanuel, God with us. John 6, 37 says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Amen. I have a reverence for God uh, because God's not casting me out. Uh, eternity's a very long time. You might as well right now start getting used that God keeps his word and when God promises it, you can bank on it, honey, and we're going to go off into eternity and he's never going to cast me out. Praise God. Amen. I feel sorry for them people who think they can lose salvation every time they sin and mess up. Praise God. I've done been lost every day since I got saved. Amen. Praise God. That's, that, that's ridiculous. Amen. That's a lie from the devil, friend. Can I tell you? And there's a rest in Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what he died for, praise God. It's because of what he does. Amen. John 10.10 10 says, I come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. If we look back in the verse before, you might want to go back later on and, and check this out. It'll sure bless your socks off. When he talks about this death, the soul that will die, right? That sin shall die. But he came that you and I, Brother Sonny, we can have life. That's everlasting. Yeah. He's talking about heaven. That you and I can be saved. That we can go to glory. But the second part of this verse, he says, and have it more abundantly. Yeah. What's that going to matter over there? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have it made over there. Yeah. He said, I inherit all things. Yes. Now, I'm going there. There's a mansion made. I'm never going to hunger, thirst. I'll never need glasses again. No more pain. No more sorrow. No more nothing. No more temptation. None of that. Amen. Praise God. So he wants you and I to have life more abundantly here on earth. Well, I'm struggling and I'm not getting it. We must work at it. And when we start working to rest in God's lettuce garden, let us start fearing God and understanding who he is and having a reverence for this holy God. Amen. We got to love him, praise God. I'm excited about the things of God. Now watch this. <laughs> what he does, he says, I'm the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. This is the same God in Genesis 1, 26 that said, let us make man in our image. Let us, <laughs> glory to God. I don't know why I thought I must have been hungry when God gave me this. Let us make man in our image. Hey, God's confident in what he does. God's bold in what he does. God is just God, amen. And that same God that created us died for us. I'm excited about that, amen. Hebrews 5, 7, if we went over one chapter, says this. Watch this. Who in the days of his flesh, it's talking about Jesus. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto that was a, to him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Who is that? Jesus. Jesus was heard of the Father with strong tears. Don't let them tear ducts dry up. Amen. I tell Brother Dwight all the time. I said, Brother, pray for me. He cried all the time. I want to pray for me. I see somebody cry, pray for me. It says that Christ, that he, he was in the garden, by the way. He was in the garden, by the way, when he was in agony. And it said that he groaned with strong cries and strong tears and that he feared God. He was heard. He feared his father. He wasn't scared of his father. He knew, he knew he was, he's, he's God. He was fully God yet fully man. But the man in him had a reverence for God. The book says it. It's right there. You can read it. It's in our text. Amen. 
It says it. In that he feared. That's in uh, 5 7. But now I want to take you somewhere and watch this. This might bless you. You may have never seen this before. Go with me to Genesis. Genesis chapter 31. In Genesis chapter 31, we find the story. We know God, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, and Jacob and Esau. Uh, I'm going to make this as short as I can, but Jacob and Esau uh, got into it, amen. Uh, and, 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 and Jacob left, and he uh, went to his mother's family, and, and he wanted Rachel. And he worked for seven years for her, and instead the dad conned him and he would have veil over her face and praise God, hallelujah, that made you think about the law. But anyway, uh, that was for free. And, and he worked for seven years and, and he conned him into marrying Leah. Yeah. And then he labored another seven years for Rachel and he got the woman that he wanted at first. And then he got Rachel. Then he, he labored for another six years and got uh, uh, Laban's uh, cattle. Amen. And now he's leaving. It's 20 years and I've made this story just as short as I can be. He's leaving, and here comes Laban. Boy, he's mad. Those are my daughters. Those are my family. And those are my cattle. Though it wasn't. Amen. Watch what he, glory to God. Look how he responds to him. In, in 41 he says, Thus have I been 20 years in thy house. I served thee 14 years for thy two daughters, and six years for thy cattle, and thou hast changed my wages 10 times. 42. Except the God of my father, remind you, this is Jacob talking. Except the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac had been with me, surely thou hast sent me away now empty. God has seen, God has seen my affliction and the labor of my hands and rebuked thee yesternight. He said, he didn't say, he said, the God of Abraham. And the fear of Isaac. What is that? The fear of his daddy. Isaac was Jacob's dad. He said, lest the fear that I had of my dad. <laughs> Praise God. Remember, Abraham took, Abraham took Isaac up going to sacrifice him. You, you think he didn't tell his boys that story? You think he hadn't said it over and over again and witnessed and preached it? Amen to these people. But he's talking about the reverence he told him. He said, except the God of my father, of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac, been with me. He knew God was with him. He had a reverence for God. Though he went through the things that he did, though he labored the way that he did, and was getting conned in the things that were going on in his life, he had the fear of God. This was a reverence for God. And that God sees, and that God knows who he is, what he does, and what he says. Amen. Ain't that good? And the fear of Isaac. Praise God. You and I must have a reverence, a fear. And I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. Amen. Praise God. So you and I must have, we see point number one, let us fear. You and I, to enter into this rest that God has for you and I, let us fear. Now, you don't have to be scared of God. Am I going to hell? Am I going to hell? Friend, if you have repented of sin and you have met Jesus Christ, friend, God cannot send you to hell. He can't do it. He cannot lie, my friend. Just make sure you repent. Make sure you gave your life to Christ. That you had that experience of change in your life. And let us go on for Christ. Let us therefore fear. Let us therefore have a reference for God that he deserves. Amen. Praise God. Point number two, look with me. Uh, back in our text in, he, in, text in Hebrews chapter uh, 4, we see one, let us therefore fear. Now I want to take you to verse 9. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. So you and I are supposed to have this rest once we have accepted the gospel, the good news uh, of Jesus Christ. Amen. He says, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. So now it says we have ceased from our own works, from the things we've done, from the things that we do, amen, and trusted Jesus' work. Trust of this plan of salvation that God had from the foundation of the world. Now look at point number two. Then he turns around and says, let us labor. Well, Brother Josh, he just said, cease from their works. But now he says, let us therefore labor. Point number two, let us therefore 
labor. Amen. And see, we must cease for salvation. You and I must cease uh, from our own works to accept Christ. But can I tell you, friend, you and I got to labor at it. You, me, you and I have got to labor to have this rest. A man or woman, boy or girl, can't get born again, put their trust in Christ. You can get born again and then live in sorrow and self-pity and hurt and nothing go right in your life because you're not doing anything. We put away our works and we start doing what we do for God. Amen. Let you and I, let you and I labor. Remember it says that he done these things, we already hit on it, from the foundation of the world. Now watch it, Ephesians chapter 2, 8 through 10. For by grace, the free gift of God, are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of work, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which hath before ordained that we should walk in them. When we get born again, we have got to work for Christ. We have got to labor to stay in this rest. Remember the first verse that we hit that the writer was writing uh, to the Hebrews. He said, at least this promise leave you. If you're not doing for Christ and you're idle and you're not doing anything for God at all, can I tell you, friend, you're going to forget the promises of God. You're going to grieve the Holy Ghost of God. He's going to buckle down inside of your heart and you and you're just going to be miserable. Amen. You and I have got to labor. Go with me to James chapter 2. And you just jump over one chapter. Just one chapter is all you got to do. James chapter 2. I know this ain't as exciting as you might want it to be, but I pray you get some help from it. James chapter 2, look, in verse 14. What doeth it profit, my brethren? Though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doeth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Shew me thy faith without thy works, and I will shew thee my faith by my works. Amen. Can I tell you, friend, when you have faith in Jesus Christ, when you have met Jesus Christ, there's an urge inside of you to tell people about it and to do the things that you do in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. He says, Thou believest thou art, there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Listen, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. To enter into this rest, you must work for Jesus Christ. You must do the things that God would have you to do. Can I tell you, friend, I've got a garden that I have gotten so many tomatoes and squash and zucchini and peppers and I've gotten all kinds of stuff, cucumbers I can't keep up with. But friend, can I tell you, work has got to go in it, amen. For us to rest in God's garden, for you and I to have to rest in our faith, we must labor. We put away our works of the flesh and we start working for the Spirit of God. Amen. Watch it. Look, 20. But wilt thou know, vain man, that the faith of works is dead? Watch this, 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by, by works when he had offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar? Remember the fear of Isaac in Genesis? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works and works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled which said, Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Did you see that? He is just and he justifies the ungodly. But he says that that by works a man is justified. Brother Martin, a man is justified by his works. I'm glad to see a deacon that every time you got a baptism, he's out there with a mop and a towel and he's taking care of something. I, I'd like that you can call upon certain men and ask them, hey, could you help me out this day and time and take this person home? And that man can take that person home. They never doubt. You call a man up and, brother, can you do this for me, do that for me? And that person will never tell you no. You know why they're being justified by their works, not for man, but for their Savior.
Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You and I got to have works for God. It's right there. You just read it. Likewise also was Rahab the harlot justified by works. When she had received the messengers. Mm, when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. That is a very deep statement. When you're dead, your body's dead, it's because your spirit's gone. It's going to be with God. One way or the other, your soul, your spirit, it exits the body. And he says, your faith without works is dead. Let us therefore labor. Don't it feel good, boys? Don't it feel good? We got Joseph and, and, and Matthew. Give a rose when it's due. Them boys, you know, if we all went and got something to eat. I'm sure we, some of us might have out down in my study. Uh, but we might have got, went out and got something to eat after service this morning. This ain't what them two boys did. They walked a couple of neighborhoods putting out things on people's door to fill these pews up. So that they might hear the gospel of God. You know why? Justified by works. Amen. You want to rest in God's garden of faith? Let us. Amen. Let us therefore fear God. Reverence for God. Let us therefore labor for God. Amen. Praise God. Watch this. Remember, I, praise God. Hallelujah. Let me read this verse. 1 John chapter 3, 16 through 19. Hereby receive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whosoever hath this world's good and seeth his brother in need and shut above his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? Yeah. How, how the love of God dwelleth in him? Watch this. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Yeah. Watch it. And hereby we know that we are the truth and shall assure our hearts. You keep getting in this rut of, of your faith and wondering, God, what's going on? God wants you to rest, honey. Brother, God wants you to rest, but you must labor for it. Before him, let us labor, friends. Amen. Think about Laban. We talked about it in Genesis. He labored seven years and was lied to. He labored another seven years and got what he wanted. If you really think about that, I, I could, I'm not going to chase that. I, and then he did another six years for this cattle, knowing the whole time he feared God. He had reverence for God. Do you realize, friend, you don't not always going to understand why you're going through what you're going through in life. Amen. I didn't understand why I got a blood clot. I'm, I'm 33 years old and I got a blood clot. DVT. What in the world? Amen. Just found out the other day I don't have it. No more. Hey, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. We go through the things that we go through because it's God's will. If you're his child, just, have, just hold on. Just hold on. He's in control. You and I must labor no matter what it is God has put before us. And he tells you to clean that toilet, bless God, clean the toilet. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. We've got to do things for God. Yeah. We've got to labor in the things of God. Galatians, uh, Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 through 10 says this. And let us, and let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Kind of like a garden. You just wait. And if you sow it, you're going you're gonna to reap it. Amen. Praise God. Reap it so as we had therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially them who are of the household of faith. Mm. Household of faith. Praise God. Look back with me in Hebrews chapter 4 in our text. Amen. Go back to Hebrews chapter 4. I'm sorry, verse 13. This is why. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. God sees and knows all things. You come to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesdays, wonderful, please come. I, want every, I wish every single one of you was here every single Sunday night. I wish every single one of you that's here right now was here on a Wednesday night. You do what God tells you to do, my friend. But can I tell you, he sees and knows all things. But if we're coming to church and we're not doing the things that God wants us to do, we're not resting in his faith. God wants you and I to have rest. God wants you and I to enjoy salvation. God wants you and I to enjoy this life. Can I tell you, friends, I know we got cares, worries, doubts, fears, sin, temptation, all these things, but God loves you. And there is a rest for the people of God. And I'm excited about that, amen. Praise God, there is for you and I. In verse 14, uh, look what it says in the next verse. Seeing that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us 
Hold fast our profession. Amen. Amen. God can't go back on his word. If you repented and trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, bless God, take him at his word. Fear God, reverence him. Amen. And therefore let us labor. Because we fear God, because we reverence for God, let us do. I told you about Josiah, my son. Man, I'll go out. I don't care what it is that boy's life behind me. Let me do that, Daddy. Something that boy cannot do. I go try to lift up the back end of a car. He's going to try to say, Daddy, let me do that. You know why? He wants to show reverence to his daddy. He wants to help his daddy. He wants to make him happy. He wants to do the things that's pleasing sight. Like, Brother Sonny, I want, to be, I want to make God happy. I want to do the things that God wants me to do. Amen. I want, I want to enjoy the rest. Though I don't all the time. I'm not going to sit up here some uh, superhero of the faith and tell you that I never have a bad day. Because I do. But friend, there is a rest yeah. in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. He's already died for you. Now Hebrews 6.10. Now watch it. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. You and I must labor. Amen. Uh, amen. Praise God. Yeah. Let us fear. Let us labor. And lastly, look with me uh, in verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace yeah. that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Yeah. So this tells me we reverence God. Let us reverence God. Let us fear God. And let us labor for God. But why did he say this thirdly? Because there's going to be hard times. Because there's going to be down times. Because there's going to be bad times. There's going to be financial problems. There's going to be health issues. There's going to be things that come up in your life. But God says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that may obtain mercy, find grace to help in the time of need. You know why? Help. That word right there, H-E-L-P. You and I need help from God. Amen. And how do we get it? Again, you've got to understand the tabernacle. And I, we don't have time. We could praise God. Uh, anyway, uh, you've got to understand the tabernacle and what's going on here and that he's talking to the Hebrews. There's no more one man going behind this veil. Amen. It, it has been torn from the top down. Amen. That made the sun turn its back. Praise God. Hey man, it made the sun turn its back. It made the graves open up, praise God. It made, it made the earth open up, praise God. Amen. Some people say that it was the earthquake that caused that, that veil to rip. It was the veil ripping that caused the earthquake. Amen, praise God. Praise the Lord, amen. Let us therefore, therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. Why? Because we're weak. Like I said, we have problems. We have issues. There is temptation. There is health problems. There is financial problems. There is the we you and I need help. Amen. And you and I don't have to go to a confessional box. You don't have to come to the preacher and say, Preacher, I've done this. Go to God. Amen. Tell Jesus. He died. Therefore, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Hey, I don't have none from God. Let, let the most nastiest, vulgarest, grossest thing cross your mind. Tell it to God. See if it don't make you feel good. Amen. Don't, and God will take care of it. Because he has. He can't go back on his word. He said if we confess our sin, he's faithful just to forgive our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. Amen. And this is why. You, you can see it right here in the text. Look back at verse 15. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Which means he can be. But was in all points tempted like as we are. Yet without sin. God took on this body. God took on this body that he would know what we're tempted with. To know what it feels like. To, you got to really, you got to get this in your mind. God, a holy God that can't look upon sin, took on a body that he might know what temptation's like. That he might know what you and I was going to go through. That he might know what it was he was dying for. And he did it. Remember, before the, his works was finished, before the foundation of the world. They, they, they were. Praise God. I'm, I'm thankful about that. He took our place. Amen. He took our place that we might enjoy this rest. Amen. Praise God. In liberty and freedom. Romans 8, 1 says, There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. How does that make sense? Find out that you're weak and tell God about it. You'll find out. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Let us therefore come boldly, friend. 
You and I must come boldly to God. You and I need him, amen, and he is there. Praise God. Hebrews 10, 17 through 23 says, And their sins and iniquity will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no, watch this. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. What does that mean? So once I've been saved and forgiven, there's no more offering of the sins that have blessed God. No, Jesus stretched out his arms and said, it is finished. Yeah. There's not coming another Savior. Yeah. There's not, he's not entering back into the world to die on a cross yeah. again. Amen. He did it once and for all. Yeah. Amen. For past, present, and future yeah. sin. Amen. Once and for all. It's done. It was settled. When you realize, when you get to the point where you realize that the day that you got saved, you got saved. Yeah. Yeah, sir. You realize, Brother Gentry, the day that you enter into eternity when the Lord calls you home that you'll enter into eternity the same time Apostle Paul did the same time that I will the same time that she will and everybody else here that has put their trust and faith in the Lord yeah. Jesus Christ because in eternity there is no time when you realize the day that you put your trust and faith in Jesus Christ and his righteousness was applied to your life you'll realize that you're a saved person amen you're not going to hell amen and God is on his throne and he does not see your sin what are you talking about what are you talking about what are you talking about? Amen. Praise God. We must confess. God's on the throne. Praise God. Watch it. By new, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by new and living which hath consecrated for us through the veil, which is to say his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance Remember, resting in God's lettuce garden. He wants us to rest in our faith. He said, let us draw near with the true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled with an evil conscience from an evil conscience and our bodies washed in pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. He didn't say you've got to be faithful. You need to be faithful. You ought to be faithful. But can I tell you, friend, it's God that is faithful. It's when you mess up, he is still faithful. It's when you have messed up, he is still faithful. There had no temptation taken unto man, but which is common to man. But God is faithful. You and I are going to mess up. We're going to do wrong. Should we try to? No. Should we carry on in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Said Apostle Paul. But God forbid means certainly not. I can I tell you, friend, you're going to mess up. You're going to fall short. Praise God. But thank God he's on his throne because he's faithful. He's faithful. Because Jesus and God got together, praise God, let you and I have, let us come for direct access to the Father. Brother, uh, Brother Bobby, if you'd help me, I got a few more for you. Let us therefore fear to rest. God has a rest for his people. Resting in God's lettuce garden. Remember, a garden, it, it is a place of life, growth, fruit, hard work, rest, reward, beauty, enjoyment, miracles, seasons, thought, conversations, beauty, and price. God wants you and I to enjoy this life of salvation, of living for Him. We must fear Him. We must reverence God. Amen. You and I must fear Him. Praise the Lord. We must labor for Him. Amen. Praise God. And you and I must come boldly to the throne of grace. I need it every day. The man preached behind the pulpit this morning. I repent it, but I repent every day. I need to come boldly every day needing this grace. I've got a few scriptures I want to throw at you really fast while they're getting the song ready. Lamentations 3, 40 and 41. Let us search and try our ways and turn again. That's how merciful he is. And let us turn again to the Lord. Friend, if you're here, I don't know what you're going through, what things might be going on in your life. But it says right there in Lamentations, let us again. He's the God of second chances, third chances, fourth chances, fifth chances. Hey, bless God, and my mind don't make sense, but he does. Let us search and try our ways. You've got to search and try your way. Come at this old-fashioned offer and do so. To the Lord. 41 says, let us lift up our heart with our hands unto God in the heavens. I don't lift up my hand for you to see me. I'm lifting up because my heart feels good. Because I'm glad what God's done. Let us lift up uh, our heart with our hands. Amen. Psalms 95.1. Oh, come let us sing unto the Lord. Let us 
Come before His presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto Him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Verse 6 says, Oh, come let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. 1 Thessalonians 5, 6 says, Therefore let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep in the night and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Hebrews 10, 23, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for He is faithful that promised. Galatians 5, 25, If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. 26, Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Hebrews 12, 1 through 2, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us, Lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the day that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God, resting in God's lettuce garden. Hebrews chapter 4. Let us fear, let us labor, and let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we might rest and enjoy God's lettuce garden of faith. Watch this. Ain't you glad God lets us? Amen. Amen. Ain't you glad God let This should go on for a long time, and I'm not going to. He don't have to, but he lets us. He don't make us, but he lets us. We don't deserve to see his face, but he's going to let us. We don't deserve to go to heaven. But he's going to let us resting in God's lettuce garden. Let us enjoy our faith. Let us take God at his word. Let us get something done for Jesus. Let us trust in the Savior of the world. Hallelujah. Father, I love you, God. I'm thankful you let us do some things. God, I pray you use this altar tonight. God, let us get right that needs to get right. Let us surrender that needs to surrender. And let us, Lord God, get saved, the ones that need to get saved. Let us, God, use this altar tonight. Lord, I pray any heart that's been penetrated, Lord God, by your precious Holy Spirit, Lord, may they act tonight. We love you, Father. Thank you that you let us do some things. Thank you, Lord God, that you let us fear you. Lord God, that you let us reverence you. God, thank you that you let us labor for you. you don't need us, praise God, but you do. You let us. God, as we boldly come to the throne of grace tonight, Lord, may you let us gain the power that is needed in our life in these furthest times we're living in. We love you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would, please stand.